Good evening, brothers and sisters. You know, the time has come many times when the devil doesn't want certain messages preached. We go through all different kinds of uh, difficulties. But you know something? God is good. God is good. Today, the Lord wants to take us on a ride. I want you to buckle your seatbelts. Because not only does this presentation tie into the other presentations, we're always dealing with what's the theme for this, this camp meeting. Who will receive what? You have your Bibles? Before we get started, let's have a word of prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, we thank you for this moment and this opportunity to lift up thy son, Jesus, that as seven-day Adventist, Father, we may bring our hearts back into the Bible truth. For we have a more sure word of prophecy, Father, that no matter if we have seen it with our own eyes, prophecy is more sure. Wake us up, dear Lord. Let this not just be information but let it be a turning point in our lives to see where we are in history. Speak through me, dear Lord, and let your words be heard. Speak through this broken vessel, not for my sake, but for the sake of thy people and for the sake of thy son. We ask this in his precious and holy name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, who will be, be sealed by God is the title of this presentation. Let's open up our Bibles to Revelations chapter 7. Revelations chapter 7. You know, some of the things that Brother Rico talked about, we're going we're gonna to look at, but we're going to look at it from a different angle. Revelations chapter 7. Is everybody there? All right, let's look at verses 1. 2 and 3. It says, After these things, I saw four angels standing on the what? And what were they doing? Of the earth, right? That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal, the what? Of who? And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have what? Sealed the servants of who? Where? In their foreheads. So where will the seal of God be placed? And we have seen in the last presentations that it all has to do with the mind. We talked in the Sabbath school lesson yesterday about how we are truly being affected. God has given you and I a message. What's that message? The three angels message. Say it. Say it like you mean it. What's the name of the message? But this is the problem. If the gen oh, let me make this disclaimer. I am not here to talk about anybody or to put anybody down. I am just here to speak the tra straight facts. Can I do that? If the General Conference came in here today and said, walk around this building seven times, most of us would do it. But Jesus has given us a message to preach to the world so that we could do something for somebody else, and we won't even study it. Where does our loyalty as Seventh-day Adventists truly lie? Do it lie in men or do it lie in our Lord and Savior? See, we have to understand, the Protestant world wants to be saved in sin. Seventh-day Adventists want to be sealed in disobedience. So tell me something, what's the difference? It doesn't matter what position you and I hold in the church it matters to God what position we hold Jesus in our hearts. 
That's where it all stands, brothers and sisters. There's an image to be formed. God wants to form his image in us, but there's another agency that wants to form another agency, another image in another form in us. There are two images that's being strived for, brothers and sisters, and you and I have to decide which one we want. Who will be sealed by God? Let's go to Psalms. Psalms 24. And let's look at verses 3 through 5. Psalms 24, verses 3 through 5. When you're there, say amen. Are we there? I still see heads down, pages turning. Psalms 24, 3 through 5 says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has a what? And a what? Who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of what? So brothers and sisters, we cannot receive the seal of God without the righteousness of God. But this man here is setting up another image to a different God. It's all about social engineering. And in order to have social engineering, that means somebody else has to be in control. Let me ask you this. How many of you are drinking tap water? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Most of you are not. In the tap water, they put the fluoride. Fluoride is used for a lot of different things they don't tell you about, but one of the things that it does, that it refigures the thinking ability of the mind. But not only that, but now they're adding lithium to the water, which also dilutes the mind and restructures the brain. Lithium is a toxic metal, and they don't have any studies to tell us what happens when you mix lithium with fluoride and all the other chemicals that are in the water. So what do you think that does to the mind? It weakens it, and we lose our ability to think. You know, there was a uh, video on YouTube, and in fact, it made news. A guy was walking down the street. Another guy walked up to him, punched him in the face. The guy fell out in the street. And the people just walked on by. They just walked on by because their minds, our minds are being diluted. The man laid in the street. One man ran over, rifled his pockets, and ran off. The other people walked by. A cab came around the corner, brothers and sisters, ran him over and killed the man because nobody had the love of God in them to get this man off the street. Satan is working on the minds of each and every one of us so that we cannot be sealed by the seal of God. And the seal of God is going to be placed where? In our forehead. In our forehead, it means our minds, right? Now, let's take a look at this. These are all current events. What happened back last September? Hope came to America. We heard that this weekend, too. But not only that, in Seoul, Korea, in September 2015, they signed an agreement of 14 religious organizations called the Signing of a Religion of a One World Religion. They've already made a step forward to setting up a one world religion. Catholicism, Islam, uh, Baha'i faith, uh, other religions have come together. The evangelicals were not there this time. But they are making this one world religion, and guess who else they want to be a part of that one world religion? The one world Bible will be the NIV, because it's going to be the one world religious Bible, and that's what most of our leaders and the leaders in the other churches are using today. So their minds are already being prepped to slide right in to the one world religion. God says, brothers and sisters, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's go there. Thank you, Lord. 
2 Corinthians. Because we have been a part of the ecumenical movement for a very long time. Most Seventh-day Adventists don't realize that we are even in the uh, ecumenical movement. During the ecumenical movement, brothers and sisters, we all have to look like the other denominations. We have to believe what they believe, and we have to come together on points of common, doctrines that we can agree on. Brothers and sisters, the only doctrines that we have that we can agree on with them is the love of Jesus. But it has been made a weak sentimentalism. But for Bible students, even the love of Jesus, Jesus says, if you love me, do what? So even if we're studying the love of Jesus, he still calls for us to be commandment keepers. Second, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 6, let's start with verse 14. Are we there? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, do what? Say it again, say it again, say it loud. And be ye what? Says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, brothers and sisters. We're supposed to separate, not join together with unbelievers. Those who are trampling on the law of God should not be in part of our community and we should not be a part of that community because God has to have a pure people to speak the first, second, and the third angel's message. The third angel's message is not just a message for the people out there, but it's a message for us. Because the third angel's message is a lifestyle. But that message has to go away along with the sanctuary, along with the health message, along with temperance, along with the spirit of prophecy, and along with righteousness by faith. Victory over sin. Because we have ministers today saying we're going to be sinning to Jesus come. And brothers and sisters, our people are laughing it up. Why? Because we have separated ourselves from the word of God. This entity, Pope Francis, the first Jesuit pope, and has always been the Jesuits' aim to bring the Roman Catholic Church and the world under their control. And now they got one of their boys in position. And he know, and you know, that how he has been working around the world. And brothers and sisters, the things that he is saying is genetically affecting the minds of the people. And we want to see that. Here we have Pope Francis. He speaks of peace and healing at the 9-11 memorial. Pope Francis places a white rose on the South Pole of the 9-11 Memorial in downtown Manhattan on September 25th in New York. Now let me ask you a question. When the Bible says they say, peace, peace, what happens? Sudden destruction comes, is that correct? Uh, this works better when I turn it on. By uh, this column, this news article. Now see, this is not he said, she said. Everything here is documented, all right? But like I said before, this is not for information. This is for you and I to know where we are in the line of prophecy to understand how close to the end we are and how we should be trying to get sin out of our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because as long as you and I got sin in our lives, we cannot receive what? The seal of God. Brothers and sisters, Pope Francis played, prayed at the 9-11 memorial before a cloud of onlookers, shook hands with leaders of the city's Jewish, Shiite and Muslim committee, communities, and then talked about suffering, healing, and unity. He says, I feel many different emotions standing here at ground zero, where thousands of lives were taken in a senseless act of destruction. Francis said, here, grief is palatable. The Pope said he met with family members of first responders who died in the aftermath of the attacks on September 11, 2001, in which more than 2,600 people were killed. 
But the memorial also reminded him of mankind's best qualities. He said, here amidst pain and grief, we also have a palpable sense of the heroic goodness which people are capable of, those hidden reserves of strength from which we can draw Francis, from which we can draw, Francis said. In the depths of pain and suffering, you also witness the heights of generosity and service. He closed with a message of unity telling the crowd that religious differences should never get in the way of what? Brothers and sisters, can we unite without Jesus? Jesus has to be the uniting power. Jesus said in John 15, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Any branch that divide, divine in me will bear fruit, right? And those that don't bear fruit, the Father will purge away, right? He also says that without him, how much can we do? So how can we be unified if Christ is not the unifying power? Brothers and sisters, the world is trying to draw branches together. Pope Francis is bringing all the religious powers together and no Christ is in it. So when two branches are grafted together, can they bear fruit? They have to be grafted in to the vine that they can receive the sap, which is the Holy Spirit, in order for them to bear fruit. And that fruit is the character of God. Because you and I know that the law of God is God's character. Only way we can get into heaven is to have his character. Jesus is waiting on us to bear his character. When you're dealing in agriculture, the crops don't wait on the farmer. The farmer waits on the crops. Christ is wait, waiting for us to reflect his character so that he can come back and get his people. But there's another entity, Satan, which is trying to make people reflect him by changing the thought patterns through the food, through the air, and through the water, and through our religious teachings. He has to change everything around. He said, peace comes only through unity. Francis said, and peace is the only way in which the legacy of those who lost their lives on September 11, 2001, will not be forgotten. Instead, they will be present whenever we strive to be prophets, not of tearing down, but of building up. Prophets of reconciliation, prophets of peace, Francis said. Brothers and sisters, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's see what the Bible has to say. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. When you're there, say amen. The Bible says, in fact, I'll just start with verse 1. But of the times and of the season, and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So when they shall say of peace and safety, then sudden destructions cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So as the world is talking about peace, brothers and sisters, the world is about to be destroyed. Do we want to be destroyed with it? No, I want to be sealed by the sealing God. Christian today, religious fundamentalism, keeping God away from the people, says Pope Francis. Pope Francis is blaming religious fundamentalism for keeping God away from the people. Now let me show you how they set this up. There's no such thing as ISIS. There's no such thing as Al-Qaeda. These organizations are being set up by the CIA. When Al-Qaeda was set up and they played out their role, who came on the scene? ISIS. How did ISIS get their, how did ISIS get their weapons? They got them from the U.S. When they pulled out of Afghanistan, when they pulled out of Iran, what do you think they left with the military? They left it over there. They said, well, ISIS confiscated the weapons. They confiscated the weapons that the United States left over there purposely. These people have been raised up. It's about Muslims. There was a newspaper man that did a study on how many percentage of the terrorist attacks were committed by Muslims. Only 5%. 
So who did the other 95%? But we are looking at the fact that what they're trying to do, Islam is being the goat to be used to put this pressure on God's people. Because as long as there's one commandment keeping person, Satan cannot take over this world. So Satan is building up his forces. All this has to do with worship. It has nothing to do with fighting. Brothers and sisters, they're only fighting in the Middle East. The nuclear agreements that they're having, remember, when we go to Daniel 11.43, the king of the north has to control the oil, the gold, the silver, and the banks. It is the Roman papacy behind the scene, and they want it. Iran, we got more bases around Iran than we have any other country because they want the natural resources. Rome has to control the natural resources and when we go to Revelation chapter 18, it lists a whole list of the things that the papacy must control and how the merchants wax wicks by controlling these powers. So it says, our God is a God who is close and accompanies. Fundamentalists keep God away from accompanying his people they divert their minds from him and transform him into an idolatry. Then we have from Reuters, Pope condemns religious fundamentalism, Middle East violence. Now, they are called extremists because we're dealing with social engineering. They call it the uh, Islamic radicals, extremists, fundamentalists. Now they're calling them fundamentalism. They're calling us people, extremist fundamentalism, but they're leaving out the moose, all right? Because they're going somewhere with this. It says, in wide-reaching interviews, Pope Francis says he's worried about secretarianism worldwide will ask God about retirement. Pope Francis strongly condemned violence in the Middle East Friday in an interview with the Vatican correspondent at Barcelona-based Daily La Vanguardia, all right? Following his first visit to the Middle East as Pope last month, the Pontiff criticized fundamentalism in Christianity, Islam, and Judaism as a form of what? Now listen to what he's saying. He condemned and criticized fundamentalism in Christianity, Islam, and Judaism as a form of what? And then he says, a fundamentalist group even if it kills no one, even if it strikes no one, is vital. Does that make sense? Then he says, the mental structure of fundamentalism is violence in the name of God. Now, here's my question. What does, fundamental, fun, what does fundamentalism mean? Can anybody tell me? Fundamentalism, Webster's Dictionary. A form of religion, especially Islam or what? Protestant Christianity that upholds belief in strict literal interpretation of the scriptures. Which church on earth, Protestant church, upholds belief in strict literal interpretation of the scriptures? Seven day Adventists, right? Strict adherence to the basic principles of any subject or discipline. What is the discipline that we hold to? The law of God. So we're seeing that the fundamentalism that he wants to get rid of are Bible-believing Christians, which takes us to the Seventh-day Adventist church. So he has to work on the minds of the people. He's working through food. He's working through the water. He's working through the air. He's working through the leaders. Because let me tell you this. FEMA has contacted over 26,000 ministers and all denominations to take control so that when the next cataclysmic event happened in this country, that the leaders of the churches will take control of the congregations and tell them, don't worry about it. Jesus is in control. So that the Christian population will not act. Because if you can control the basic members of every congregation, you control most of the population. The rest, you can always throw them in jail. But as long as you have a people to control, brothers and sisters, we're going to see Satan working behind the scenes and he's using everything to divulge the mind so that we get to think like he thinks. Because the battle is for the mind. Vatican Radio, Pope Francis, religion should not be confined to a what? In other words, you shouldn't think for yourself. 
about who you want to worship or who your love is for. It shouldn't be up to you. But let's finish what he's saying. Because he's sitting here with the uh, commander of uh, Italy. Vatican Radio. The orderly development of civil pluralistic society requires that the authentic spirit of religion not to be confined to a personal conscience, but that its significant role in the construction of society is recognized, says Pope Francis. In his remark to the Italian president, on the other hand, public authorities, now I want you to listen, public authorities who are primarily expected to create the conditions for a just and sustainable development, that word sustainable means controllable, so that civil society can develop all its potentialities, can find a valuable and useful support for their action in the commitment and loyal of collaboration of the church, he said. Now, through independent church and state share, though independent church and state share the common responsibility of meeting people's spiritual and physical needs with humility and dedication. What is he saying? He is saying that church and state must come together to control the minds of the people. Church and state are supposed to be separate. Here we have from the Christian Herald, Catholic Herald, Pope Francis asked Waldensian Christians to forgive the church. This was another first that happened in, two, in September. Brothers and sisters, what happened to the Waldensians? Wasn't they slaughtered by the Roman church? Even when they let them go, they let them go. They had to walk across the Alps to get to safe, safety, but they were not allowed to wear their shoes. They sent them out barefooted. Many of them died, but many of them made it. Pope Francis asked forgiveness of Waldensian and, per, and for persecution. Pope Francis visited the Waldensian church in Turin, Turin, and in a powerful emotional moment asked the Waldensians to forgive the Catholic Church for its historic and brutal persecution in the Middle Ages. Francis is the first pope ever to enter a Waldensian church. On the part of the Catholic Church, I ask your forgiveness. I ask it for non-Christians and even inhumane and even inhuman attitudes and behavior that we have showed you. Does, let me ask you this. What does Sister White say about Rome? Rome never changes, do it? So it's a build up on the mind. It is a play up on the mind. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us. Prior to, Pope, prior to the Pope's remark, Pastor Egino uh, Bernardi, the pastor of the Waldensians community in Turin, asked why the church had been rejected by Rome. The Waldensian board lifted the uh, representative, listed the representatives of other churches present, including Methodists, Lutherans, Baptists, and Adventists as moderators of the Waldensian board. I want to thank you in particular for the words of fraternity you have repeatedly expressed towards our, uh, towards our church. By entering this temple, you have crossed a historic threshold that of a wall that stood over eight centuries ago when the Waldensian movement was accused of heresy and excommunicated by the Roman church. If you're not a part of the Roman church, how can you be excommunicated? Brothers and sisters, and we have to understand this in our church because the same philosophies are here in our church. How many of you are worried about your names being on the church books? The, men, the policies of men have superseded the Bible because you can be disfellowshipped out of the church because you did not follow the church policy, but you followed the Bible. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but if they take my name out of the church books, that's okay with me. Because as long as my name is in the Lamb's book of life, that should be all that I should worry about. Because as long as our names are in the Lamb's book of life, we're still in God's church. And we still have the opportunity to be sealed by God, even though our names are not in the church book. Amen? Pope John the 23rd on Encyclio Miranda Purus, meaning looking ahead. I have to move on this one because I want you to see how the social engineering is working. I want you to see how they're playing on the minds of not only seven-day Adventists, but on the people. So not only are they messing with us from the outside, 
but they're messing with us on the inside, brothers and sisters. They're destroying the mind through the food, the water, right? But they're also throwing us, disturbing our minds through other things. But let's see what it is. After World War II, during September 1957, Pope John XXIII gave Jesuit theater even broader horizons with this encyclical Miranda Proris, meaning looking ahead. Now, does anybody know anything about the Jesuit theater? During the Dark Ages, Jesuit theater is, that's where you get all your plays, your theatrics. They were the first ones to invent motion pictures. So you get all that from them. See, we think it's from the Jews in Hollywood, but the Jews in Hollywood are not the Jews. We think of a Jews. These are the Jews that's working for Rome. And we're going to see that in a minute. It says, men must be brought into closer communion with one another. All right? They must become socially minded. These technical arts, cinema, sound broadcasting, and television can achieve this aim far more easily than the printed word. The Catholic Church is keenly desirous that these means be converted to the spreading of an advancement of everything that can be truly called good, embracing as she does the whole of human society within the orbit of her divinely appointed mission, she is directly concerned with the fostering of civilization among all people. So she is talking about through the technical arts of your movie, your television programs, and your radio to teach you to think how they think. So what she is saying that all humanity must think alike because we must be brought into a closer communion with one another. In order for us to do that, we must all agree on the same things. So in order to get us to all agree on the same thing, they want to use the radio, the television, to bring us all together. So that means they have to work on the what? On the mind. It says here, uh, Pope John XXIII urged Pope Pius XI sound broadcasting and television under the guidance of a priest especially chosen by the bishop at the same time we urge that the faithful and particularly those who are militant in the cause of Catholic action, Jesuits and other protégés, be suitably instructed so that they may appreciate the need for giving to these offices their willing united effective support in 1964, Pope Paul VI amplified Miranda uh, Proris, Proris with the decree enter Marifia, among, and which means among the wonders, saying it is, now listen to this. It, in that encyclical, it says, it is the church, speaking of the Catholic church, birthright to use and own the press, the cinema, the radio, the television and all like natures. All like natures would include the internet. So who owns the media? The Catholic Church, all right? Now this is their writing. I'm just repeating to you what they say, all right? It says, Pope Paul cited a special responsibility for the proper use of the means of social communications which rest on journalists, writers, actors, designers, producers, exhibitors, distributors, operators, sellers, critics of those in a word who are involved in the making and transmission of communications in any way, whatever. So is she control of even those who are participatory in these entities, in these detectives? Out? She is controlling everything about the media today. It says they have power to direct mankind along a good path or an evil path by the information they impart and the pressures they exert. So through these technical arts, brothers and sisters, they can make us go, they, they can convince us to go to the right or to the left, for us to do good or for us to do evil. And we know that the television, the radio, and the theaters act on the what? Act on the mind. We can be hypnotized by our television and by our movies. It would be for them to regulate. Let me read it again. It will be for them. Who is the them? The Catholic Church, right? Now listen. It will be for them to regulate the economy, economic, political, and artistic values in a way that will not conflict with the common good. So it's up to them. They're controlling the economy, and we saw that in the global thing, right? 
We, they're controlling the political, they're in control of whoever becomes the president, and the artistic values, anything, anybody that's connected to the media, they are in control of. Brothers and sisters, I'm leading up, and I'm building up to one specific point. In order for us to receive the seal of God, we must know and understand where we stand. Because it has to come from the mind. It says here, this is called social engineering. All right? Now, the quality of entertainment content was uh, decreed in a section of intermorifia encouraging the chronically and uh, description of the representation of moral evil, which can, with the help of the means of social communication and with suitable dramatization, lead to a deeper knowledge and analysis of man and to manifest and a manifestation of the true and the good in all these splendors. Emboldened by the papal decree, social communicators since 1965 has pushed the constitutional agreements of free speech to the limits by chronically describing and representing moral evils which such progressively vivid, repulsive, proof me lewd, yet often appealing details that entertainment has become, in the opinion of many, a veritable technological how-to of moral evil. It clearly does not lead audience to a deeper appreciation of Holy Scripture. This fact identifies entertainment today as successful Jesuit theor uh, theoretical theatrical mission. So we see that these things that are happening in the world today is coming from who? From the Jesuit. It's all about man, not God. We see a lot of things that's going on in televisions today, right? Do they lead us to God or do they lead us away from God? And if they're leading away from God, they're leading away from the seal of God. Because they're poisoning our minds with drugs. They're poisoning our minds with illegal and illicit lewd acts on the TV. There was a time they didn't cuss on TV. There was a time they didn't kiss on TV. Now you see everything from a man and a woman to a man and a man kissing on the television. My mother was watching television one day. We was packing her up to move from Canada back to the uh, United States after my father died. She's supposed to be helping me, but she said, I'm going to sit down and eat breakfast. I came in there and said, I said, Ma, you going to help me? She's sitting there. She's got a bowl of cereal. She's got a spoon of cereal. And she's sitting there watching TV, paralyzed, while the milk is dropping out of the spoon into the bowl. She was, and, and when I got to thinking, that's how we are when we're watching TV. And when we become hypnotized, we're sitting there. And when you become hypnotized, you start leaning forward into the TV because the TV is drawing you in. Because this is the main method. What is the main method that they sell to people today? Television. You can get cable at a real cheap price for the first 12 months. Then the price shoots up because they know that through the television, they can control the people. Not only can you watch television at the movies, not only can you watch it at your home theater and home, but now you can watch it on your telephone. Anything that says smart, leave it alone. Whether it says smartphone, smart computer, smart house, leave it alone. Now, this is from Catholic quote, from Catholic answer. We are Seventh-day Adventists, right? It says here, Seventh-day Adventists cannot change its views on the Catholic Church being the whore of Babylon without admitting that it was wrong on Sunday worship. Are we wrong on Sunday worship? So we can't, we can't stop being Adventists, right? It cannot admit that Sunday worship is not the mark of the beast without changing its views on the Jewish Sabbath. Can we change their views? Is there such thing as a Jewish Sabbath? This is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. It didn't say it was the Sabbath of the Jews, did it? But just, just because people are talking about the Jewish Sabbath, the world believed that the Sabbath was just for the Jews. That's why it's important for us as Seventh-day Adventists to learn the three angels' message, to preach to the people, brothers and sisters, so that they can come out of the false worship into the true worship. But if we don't know the message, each one of us is going to be held accountable for what we couldn't do to help save somebody else. Sister White tells us that it is the third angel's message that seals and binds us and separates the wheat from the tares and prepares the wheat for the garner of heaven. Brothers and sisters, we have to know and understand the three angels' message. 
She said we are to demonstrate it daily in our lives. So in order for us, we, us to demonstrate it daily in our lives, it has to be a part of us. It has to be our lifestyle so that when we go to preach this message, we will have an experience in the message. And don't think people on the street can't see through falsehood. It says, Seventh-day Adventism cannot cease to be anti-Catholic without ceasing to be Seventh-day Adventists. So when we join the ecumenical movement, we are saying that we are no longer anti-Catholic. But we have to be because God put us on this earth to expose the man of sin. Is that not correct? But because things are being changed around, we're not only not exposing the man of sin, but we in bed with the man of sin. And we have to become separated from that movement so that God can put his seal upon each and one of our heads as we, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can overcome and gain victory over our sins, brothers and sisters. Now that Rome has declared her enemy, she must now work on the minds of the people through social engineering to get the people to believe what she wants them to believe. Brothers and sisters, what way would you think Rome would use to get people to believe what she believed. You see this cartoon? This is Family Guy. Stupid cartoon. Not only is this cartoon for children, but it's also for adults. But brothers and sisters, millions of people watch this cartoon. So I want you to watch it. And I want you to listen. Brothers and sisters. Could y'all hear that? Who was they saying was the crazy people? Because they went to church on Saturday and not on Sunday. Millions of people watch this and their minds are being converted to believe that we are crazy. So Rome is already preparing the minds that when you go out to preach the word of God, hey, these people are crazy. Why? Because their minds have been changed and they cannot receive the seal of God. But we are to preach this message. Because as the third angel message seals us, and also as we call them out into the truth, they too can be sealed. So brothers and sisters, we have to know and understand who will receive, be sealed by the seal of God. Who will, stand, who will ascend into the hills of the Lord, or who will stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Brothers and sisters, let me show you how this works. Sister White says in early writings, page 188, paragraph 2. You can look it up yourself. She says, as Jesus was rejected, so I saw that these messages have been rejected. And as the disciples declared that there is salvation in no other name under heaven given among men, so also should the service of God faithfully and fiercely warn those who embrace but a part of the truth connected with the third message, that they have gladly received all the messages as God has given them or have no part in the matter. She is telling us that if we reject the third angel's message, the three angels' message, we reject Jesus. So if we don't learn, if we don't live, and if we don't preach the three angels' message, we have rejected him. But we want to still be sealed in disobedience. Brothers and sisters, this is life-saving, life-changing, because we don't realize just how close we are at the end of time. We have to know and understand where do we live and how do we live. She says this, the theme of greatest importance, which importance? Is the third angel's message. Now understand, you can't receive the third until you accept the second. You can't receive the second until you accept the first. So, embracing the messages of the first and second angels 
all should understand the truths contained in these messages and demonstrate them in daily life. So if we have to demonstrate them in our daily life, they have to be a part of us. Brothers and sisters, we have to study the word for ourselves because this is an individual matter. So, uh, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God that works in us, not another man. She also continues to say, and she tells us why. She says, all should understand the truth contained in these messages and demonstrate them in daily life, for this is essential to salvation. So if living the three angels' message is essential to salvation, then it must be essential to being sealed. Amen? Then she says, we have to study earnestly, prayerfully, in order to understand these grand truths. Brothers and sisters, they have already, through social engineering, built up the world against us. But we're not alone because we have the power of Jesus. But we must put our faith in him and learn these messages. Just because the church ain't teaching it, we're going to still be held responsible. You know why? We got the word of God. And if we got the word of God, it's us for each and every minute one of us to study his word and allow the Holy Spirit to give us that wisdom, that knowledge and the understanding that he calls for. Amen? Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for helping us to see, Father, how our minds are being distorted. We desire thy seal, not out of fear and not out of reward. Because we have separated ourselves from selfishness to love you more. We never praise you enough, but we know we can praise you more than what we do. Help us, dear Lord, to keep our minds that we may have the mind of Christ. That we may live for you and not for ourselves. That we will go and learn these messages so that we can reach the other sheep that are not of this fold, and that they may become settled into thy present truth. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Brother Henry, can you share with us um, this special book here? I think it ties in a little bit with your message, with your presentation just now. Okay, this book, this book was written by Brother Duncan. Brother Duncan can tell you more about this book than I can, but I tell you what, it is full of what is going on in the world today. This is a good book to have because the things that we're talking about today and more detail is in this book. And brothers and sisters, we have to open up our eyes to see what is going on. Why are we so indolent? Why are we sitting on our hands when the time of the, the end of time, we're already in the end of time, but the time is soon to end. We are so close to the coming of Jesus Christ, we need to be educated. And the best education that we have is the word of God. Brothers and sisters, the greatest teacher that we will ever have will be the Holy Spirit. But when you read this book, it will give you more insight and it will give you more things that are current in the world today, which is going on, because we are being drawn so close to the papacy, pretty soon we won't even know what Adventism is. Even in our Sabbath school lessons, most people do not research who the authors are in the book. You got Roman Catholic monks, you've got an evangelicals, you've got Anglicans, Anglicans in our book, in the Sabbath school book, being brought to us as Seven Day Adventism. So our minds are being poisoned by things that are not coming from God, but it's coming from the papacy. So brothers and sisters, we have to understand the truth. How can we become settled in the truth if we're studying error? Amen? The CIA, when they're looking for false bills, they don't study the false bills, they study the true bill. We must study the true word of God. Thank you very much. So Brother Aubrey Duncan will be in our lobby for the breakout session here, and I believe yours is 
going to be the second breakout session out in the lobby as well. Yes. Mine is the second breakout. His topic is about the state of the dead. If you'd like to hear more about his topic, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I'm going to ask Sister Donna if she can give a little prayer before we head out. Or, um, I'm sorry. And then we'll have a few break, a few minutes of break. Um, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to have special music. <laughs> we are going to have special music um, by Sister Sunny. Thank you so much, Sister Donna.